From CMC Media, this is The Crossroads. I'm Patrick Egan, publisher of the Agile Journal and the Configuration Management Journal. Well, joining me today from the HP Briefing Center in Cupertino, California, are Druga Semeta, Senior Product Manager with HP, and Paul Peisner, Director of Business Development for Global Alliances with CollabNet. Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. Great, thank you. All right, well, you know, one of the hottest topics in development today is DevOps, and there really doesn't seem to be a lot of consensus on what DevOps is, but I wonder if you can tell me what you think are some of the top business challenges that are driving the buzz around DevOps. Sure, I think with, uh, within the context of the IT and the business interactions, we see a lot of challenges with um, organizations moving to um, agile methodologies, and we see businesses really struggling in terms of how to keep up with that and how to manage that. It translates to higher business costs and um, more uh, slower business agility in terms of being able to take innovative ideas for the business and turn it into um, revenue generating projects itself. Yeah, to be more competitive basically, right? It's not um, uh, that development is doing something, building something, but if it is not going out of the door, it's still uh, not going to give you any revenue benefits. Right, and that, so. that really stems from um, two organization, IT organization structures within the, the silos of both of those. Uh, you've got agile initiatives that are really driving faster development. And from an ITIL perspective, you have um, a lot of uh, stability uh, capabilities and a lot of change resistance uh, built into the BSM. And so what's really needed for the sake of the business is a blended effort in which both organizations have more visibility into each other. Yeah. Well, all right, so maybe you can give us some background insight into what's going on in the IT and dev organizations today that are really driving these challenges? So uh, the background wise, you know, if you look at the traditional way of doing a business is, you know, um, business right now wants uh, agility, business agility as Paul mentioned, which means they want quality software services or products um, delivered on time, right, under budget. Uh, what it means for the IT is they have to uh, prioritize their efforts in such a way to meet the business demands and needs. But uh, what happens between the, uh, the development and operations is development is building something very quickly using uh, more modern uh, methodologies like SD, like Agile or uh, Scrum or whatever that uh, more modern methodologies. But what happens after that is there's a roadblock between uh, the development and operations side because their priorities not, are not aligned. So one of the challenges that we see in the market is the prioritization and alignment between development and operations. So from, from a development perspective, we see a lot of the tools making the developers much more collaborative, getting things done much quicker. The challenge is um, it's still a blindsided manual handoff between the developer side and the, the operations side. Ops tends to, to try and roll out projects that are misaligned with their current architectures. And they're struggling with you know, how much of the, the assets need to be internal and outsourced out in the cloud and managed internally as well or out to MSPs. Um, this just adds a, a layer of complexity for the development teams where they have no idea where they're going to be developing to exactly. and, and how to meet those requirements because the technical pieces are always changing. Yeah, and, and, and most of the times the developers doesn't know what is inside operations, how does the, the data center architecture, you know, what are the different layers, how the uh, they deployed the applications, right. whether it is cloud, look like private cloud or a public cloud or a hybrid cloud. Developers doesn't have the visibility into what happens on the ops side. And ops also doesn't have the visibility into the app side, like okay, how many defects were found, how many defects were fixed in a particular build or a release that is going onto the app uh, on the ops side. So sometimes there is a trust trust issue between the right. development and ops, and sometimes the just lack of pure visibility, like okay, how they don't know each other, what other other uh, team is doing. Right. So because of that, there will be a lot of delays uh, for releasing applications to uh, in production. And especially in the development side of the house, you end up having a lot of uh, developers reuse uh, some of their best resources when they're creating those projects without the visibility into how it's affecting the business, how it's uh, making or um, adding more risk to the development or the operation side of the house. It becomes a real challenge in terms of what do they reuse for best practice use without the visibility and the feedback loops that come from both the business use of the application as well as the IT support of it as well. Okay, well that's great. So then, what are some solutions to solve some of these challenges? So I think there's some great solutions. It really depends on the maturity of the organizations, both as independent IT groups. They tend to grow up with some very strong uh, automation tools, some great integration, um, great visibility, traceability within the disciplines. What's not happened yet to date is that integration all the way across 
so that ops can see some high-risk um, development efforts that are required by the business and they can adjust for that in terms of change management, configuration management capabilities. Likewise, on the, on the dev side, when things are changing on the, on, the on the operational side of the house, development needs to change its, its approach to a project mid-flight. There's no automation that gives each other um, visibility into those deltas that are going to be coming down the road. Right. So if you, if you, if you uh, trickle, have all these problems down there, like three things. One is the visibility, and there's collaboration between the de development and operations, and then there is a, a alignment, lack of alignment between these two teams. Uh, so it's not just a, necessarily a tools problem. You know, there's a best practices involved in this mm -hmm. to solve these problems. There's a tools involved in this. There are people, there are cultural changes as well required to really solve these challenges. So um, that's why, you know, we talked about, you know, uh, partnering uh, between HP and, uh, and Collaborate Partnership. You know, we can bring some tool integrations and also pioneering in the operations space and quality space from the HP side and also Collabnet where they bring the best in class you know development uh, tools for application lifecycle management by aligning an integration between these two tools the tool challenges uh, is taken care but still it's not going to be 100 percent because there are cultural challenges and uh, there are other process challenges still you know lurking around and the hp partnership gives us this real quality in terms of um, understanding how to change the templates for testing the capabilities Every environment you're pushing an application to has something unique in, and to be able to capture that knowledge and to make sure it's well tested to avoid any of the disruptions that come from the, spe the, the speedy development efforts and the, the need for consistent delivery of services on the operational side. Yeah. HP brings that real quality and maturity on the side to make sure that, that what is being released quickly is not going to be destroying the business or exactly. the infrastructure as well. Yeah, it's not just the speed, it's the speed versus and quality. It's the balance between speed and quality. Yeah. And you know, we have been providing, HP has been providing uh, softwares uh, to make sure the application functions and it performs and is also secure. But that's not just enough because there's a lot of other people involved uh, in delivering the applications um, on the, on the uh, development side and also from the operations side. So there are a lot of alignment and um, you know again as I said it's not just the tool problem it's also more than that it's cultural changes and uh, challenges and other things. Okay, so you guys obviously work with a lot of your customers, so can you share some best practices for our audience? Sure, we see a lot of organizations moving towards agility or going agile with their development pieces. And that's a great move and it is one of the most uh, cost-effective things you can do, as well as going and spreading out with your developer teams more of the collaborat collaboration tools so that they have more of the communication tools that, that automatically make each other's activities visible to the teams while projects are in mid-flight. Getting trained, uh, getting your teams trained in Agile, making project management as well as even configuration change management teams aware of the, the best practice um, advantages for having an Agile Scrum kind of environment. Uh, we do a lot of training in that space, I think more than anybody else in the world. Um, and it's real important for a larger reach into the organizations to make sure that it's not just development, but it's really for the sake of the business and to become more Agile across the organization. Yeah, so you know, when it comes to best practices, um, you know, as we just mentioned, the biggest challenge is what business wants is agile and agility, and uh, what IT is delivering according to business is like it's too slow. So one thing is to align the priorities, like what business wants and what IT is delivering has to be aligned. That's the number one thing. And once you have the alignment in place, then everything falls in you know in in, in place. And when you are doing agile, waterfall, whatever the methodology that you use in the uh, software development lifecycle. And uh, on the operation side, like, okay, they are, since the what business wants, they are also part of the yeah. whole process. They know, like, okay, how to um, uh, be more uh, proactive in taking the finished goods, like products, and deploying it on time instead of delaying it. So they should be part, and there should be a culture of more sharing the priorities and also uh, bringing people together. Uh, as a part of like stand-up meetings in the case of Agile or whatever the methodology you may use, but more on the communication side, what's happening. Right? So I think for developers, it's also real important that they measure the quality of their releases based on the benefit to the organization. Right. So how much impact did it, did it hit on the operational IT teams? Um, what were the, be the revenue benefits to uh, the business side of the house? I think those are more holistic approaches right. for developers so that they're not just starting a project and getting it out the door in a timely manner, but that they're, they're measuring the whole effect across the organization. And for dev, 
make sure that there's complete transparency exactly. amongst those things that are going to have impact for development and the project teams that are going to make decisions for those locations right. as well. I think those are some of the best practices. The platforms and the tools, you've got to leverage the cloud. Um, you're pulling talent from around the world. Having on-site um, software tools doesn't make sense. It's got to be scalable. It's got to be flexible. Um, the strategies that have defined operations need to be extended into development pieces so that those those core strategies that help organizations set their IP around operational best practices need to be more inclusive of the development teams as well. Yeah. So development and operations, they have to work together um, because this is the time where everything is moving really fast. Um, if you are slow, you will lose in the market. You will not be competitive. And it's not what business wants. If IT is not delivering it, you are right. basically you know, out of business. So if development and our operations work together collaboratively and have some uh, traceability back and forth and right. visibility into like each other's world, uh, they'll be more successful even for better out business outcomes. All right, that's great. So with all of this information in mind, where do you think we can start? I think it's uh, assessing your own organization, the maturity of the organizations on both disciplines, right? From an IT perspective, um, how mature are you from an operations perspective with, um, you know, do you have a CMDB in place? Do you have asset management strategies in place? All of those are great strategies that need to be extended back into dev. From an operations perspective, it's, it's very important to have a longer term um, understanding of how those applications are being used, running the whole lifecycle management capability, having the true um, a value so that you're not rewarding developers from just starting and stopping. You need to make sure they're rewarded over the longer period of time. And I think that's a, a cultural change at management level, um, taking on a, a broader perspective in terms of what IT is trying to accomplish for the sake of the business itself. Yeah, so I think there's one thing that I would obviously look at is um, how fast you are developing something and then what happens after that. If you just look at like, you know, just look at how much time each piece is taking in the life cycle of your application mm -hmm. from the beginning to the end, then you will see like where, where the bottlenecks are. And basically the reasons for these bottlenecks as we just mentioned because of collaboration, because of process alignment and all these things, all you just have to is like start like, you know, small steps, maybe smaller, you know, steps like, okay, so maybe we can align what is on the uh, ops side, maybe, uh, take some of the information and put it on the uh, application side, you know, bring the configurations, you know, your infrastructure details and put them in the, you know, uh, your source code management, right. tool, for example, something like that. That way, you know, developers know like, okay, what is on the, you know, operations right. side so that I, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing the right thing the right way so that operations will trust me because now we are aligned together. Right. On the dev side, making sure that the test teams and the development teams are working closely aligned so that as quickly as you're finding issues that need to be addressed, the developers are, are getting reworked notifications built in. So aligning your, um, your independent, your development platforms so that they have a best practice uh, automation, they're leveraging all that automation capabilities on the inside and making sure that same data is visible to the operation yeah. side as well. Exactly. I mean, you know, you can visit hp.com or collab.net to see like what our partnership, where we are going with this thing. Uh, there are more webinars and other events that are coming up on this topic. And again, DevOps is not just a tool or a, a process. It's mm -hmm. pretty much everything, people, process, and technology all together coming you know, to, you know, for better business outcomes right. for, uh, for business and IT alignment and whatnot. Right. So that's what uh, DevOps is, um, and uh, we want to add right. anything. So yeah, we have a dedicated page, page on our website where it, it helps um, whenever we find best practices between the two organizations, we're both large, constantly yeah, moving around. Put there. It's collab.net forward slash HP. It's a great place just to go and check in to see what's new, what's out there, um, activities. Uh, around the world, both local and on the web, are all kind of shared there. And uh, the whole the goal is really to make the business more agile with quality uh, development efforts. Yeah. And what we are doing is one thing you can check is HP Discover that is happening in that will be in June, mm -hmm. sometime in June in Vegas. Uh, you can come visit and uh, attend the sessions. There are dedicated DevOps sessions. And since we, uh, you know, with the partnership, the collaborative partnership, and also uh, some internal innovations that we are doing here. We can really help you to solve your problem. So come visit um, uh, HP Discover in Vegas um, and learn and see what you can do, um, how we can um, benefit from these uh, conversations. Well, it's been some great information about DevOps. Thanks for joining me again today, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. 
Well, this has been The Crossroads, a production of CMC Media and CM Crossroads. For more videos like this, visit us on the web at cmcrossroads.com. I'm Patrick Egan, publisher of the Configuration Management Journal.